Welcome to the holiday edition of At the Public Library. This month's show features a look at children's holiday books and a Kwanzaa story time, as well as listings for some great holiday programming coming up this month at the Public Library. I'm Carla Kozak, a children's librarian at the Chinatown Branch Library. I'm here to tell you about some books for the winter holidays. The winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, was traditionally a time of celebration across Europe and the Middle East. People of ancient religions feasted, danced, exchanged gifts, and built fires to bring joy and light into that darkest time of year. Almost 2,000 years ago, a baby boy was born in a manger in Bethlehem. He came to be known as Jesus Christ, and the people who followed his teachings, the Christian people, as they spread his word across Europe, incorporated many of those ancient symbols into the holiday celebrating his birth. No one knows the exact date that Jesus was born, but it's been long established that that date is December 25th, a date very near the winter solstice. The books that we have in the San Francisco libraries for Christmas include beautifully illustrated tellings of the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, old classics like Dickens' Christmas Carol and other Christmas stories, or the traditional Christmas poem, The Night Before Christmas. We have modern classics as well like Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. There are informative books. Holly, Reindeer, and Colored Lights, The Story of the Christmas Symbols, and The Truth About Santa Claus. We have many craft books for Christmas. And of course, books of Christmas carols with both the words and the music. And there are many books that just add to the spirit of the holiday, like Calvin's Christmas Wish, or Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree, or the delightful story of Emma's Christmas, which tells what would happen if a young lady really received all of the gifts mentioned in the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas? The Jewish holiday of Hanukkah predates Christmas, the birth of Jesus, by about 200 years. It celebrates a historical event of great significance for the Jewish people. Many people, knowing that Hanukkah comes right around the time of Christmas and is a holiday of lighting candles and exchanging gifts. I think it's the most important Jewish holiday. It really isn't. The far more ancient holidays of Passover, Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur share that honor. But that's not to say it's not a significant and important time. The Jewish, small Jewish armies that were victorious over the much larger Syrian armies helped ensure that the Jewish people would survive and not become assimilated into the more dominant cultures of that time. It's also the miracle of the oil. When the victorious Jewish armies were able to rebuild, clean, and rededicate the temple that had been destroyed during the battles, they found only one jar of oil, enough for one day to light the menorah, the candelabra in the temple. Miraculously, it burned for eight days, which was more than enough time to purify plenty of oil. This is why Jewish families light an additional candle for each of the eight nights of Hanukkah, and they're all lit by the shamas, the helper candle. 
Hanukkah is a celebration of religious freedom, the right to be different. Some of our books for Hanukkah include Celebrating Hanukkah, which shows a Jewish family right here in San Francisco enjoying all of the facets of this very enjoyable time. Or stories based on old Yiddish tales, like in the month of Kislev, a rich man becomes angry when he finds that poor children have been enjoying the smell of his frying latkes, the potato pancakes that are the traditional food for the Hanukkah holiday. He demands payment for, those, for the smell of those latkes. The town's wise rabbi decides that fair payment for the smell of latkes is the sound of jingling coins. Today, many children grow up in families that celebrate both Hanukkah and Christmas. Light the Lights, a story about celebrating Hanukkah and Christmas, is not only a sweet story, but it is respectful to both of the traditions. These are just some of the books, some of the many books, that can be found in the San Francisco Public Libraries. But Christmas and Hanukkah aren't the only holidays that are celebrated in December. Also starting in December, is the holiday of Kwanzaa. Stay tuned for Loretta Dowell and a Kwanzaa story time. December is the month to celebrate Kwanzaa. What is Kwanzaa? It's an African-American holiday celebration. Let's join librarian Loretta Dowell at the Ocean View Branch Library as she presents a Kwanzaa celebration story time for the children of Candlelight Preschool. The father of Kwanzaa is Ron Karenga, an African-American scholar and social activist. Kwanzaa was established in 1966 as the only original African-American holiday. Kwanzaa celebrates African harvest and the beliefs and values of traditional African customs. During Kwanzaa, we remember that while we are Americans, our roots are in Africa, the motherland. The seven principles of Kwanzaa Naguzo Saba teach values we should practice every day, not just during the Kwanzaa season. Kwanzaa is. Kwanzaa is a holiday, but unlike most, does not convey a religious observation, nor does it celebrate our nation. And though our nation gave it birth, it celebrates the cultural worth of a darker, con of a darker continent and the people that were sent. People of a darker hue, people much like me and you. People whose great history has been cloaked in mystery. So Kwanzaa is the time and place to reflect and retrace the history missing from the books, a time for taking second looks. Kwanzaa is the poured libation spilled in reverent observation of the past that paved the way for your people here today. Kwanzaa is Naguzo Saba, the seven principles that we harbor, beginning with the unity that makes us strong and helps us see, in perspective, proper light, the other six that we recite. One day after Christmas comes, we listen to the Kwanzaa drums and celebrate for seven days our old customs and modern ways. So Kwanzaa is our very own, since 1966 it's grown, from a private observation to one that's shared throughout the nation. My first Kwanzaa book by Deborah Newton Chocolate. When mama says it's Kwanzaa time, Daddy helps me dress in an African shirt. Mama dresses like an African queen. December 26, Umoja. When Grandma comes with good things to eat. December 27, Kujichagolia. When Mama says it's Kwanzaa time, Daddy flies our flag, red, black, and green. Mama hangs our map of the motherland. December 28th, Ujima. And I help light the colorful Kwanzaa candles. December 29th, Ujama. 
When mama says it's Kwanzaa time, we tell family stories each night to make the holiday special. When mama says it's Kwanzaa time, Uncle Pretty reads me stories about Africa. When mama says it's Kwanzaa time, grandma and I spend time together stringing African beads. December 30th, Nia. And when mama says it's Kwanzaa time, it's time for a family reunion with aunts from Georgia, with my uncle from the army, and with cousins from all over. December 31st, Kumba. And on the last day of Kwanzaa, we share gifts and hugs that last until the next Kwanzaa comes, January 1st, Imani. That's the end. If you'd like to find out more about the Kwanzaa celebration, visit your neighborhood branch library. The library has a variety of Kwanzaa books available, such as Kwanzaa by Deborah M. Newton Chocolate. The Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch Library will host a Kwanzaa family program on Wednesday, December 16th at 7 p.m. The program will feature storyteller James Tyrone Wallace and a presentation on the Naguza Saba. And everyone's invited on Wednesday, December 30th at 5 p.m. for a Kwanzaa celebration at the main library's Coret Auditorium. Co-sponsored by Lagada, Lesbians and Gays of African Descent for Democratic Action, the San Francisco Public Library's African American Center, and the library's Hormel Gay and Lesbian Center, the celebration is an opportunity for the gay and lesbian African American community to reach out to the entire African American community to celebrate a common heritage. There's no escaping it. It's December. And that probably means you're looking for some last-minute holiday shopping ideas. Well, look no further. The Friends Bookstore, located in the main library, has a great variety of gifts for everyone on your list. Gift certificates are also available. So stop by and see this amazing selection of gifts at the Friends Bookstore, located just inside the Larkin Street entrance of the main library. The Friends of the Library store hours are Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Friday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and closed on Sundays. The Book Arts and Special Collections Center will present their annual holiday lecture on Wednesday, December 16th at 6.30 p.m. in the main library's Coret Auditorium. This year's lecture, entitled A Typographical Trip to Haiti, will be presented by Alistair Johnston, who invites one and all to join him as he explores the folk art lettering of present-day Haiti. On Thursday, December 17th, the San Francisco Public Library International Center will present 100 Anecdotes on the Life of Simon Bolivar, beginning at 4 p.m. in the Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room in the main library. This program, presented entirely in Spanish, will examine the life of the Latin American liberator through stories and anecdotes told by historians, scholars, and the consul generals from many of the republics Bolivar helped establish in his quest for a united Latin America.
The program is being sponsored by the Bolivarian Consulates of Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, Panama, Peru, and Venezuela. And every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m., the Bernal Heights branch hosts a Spanish conversation group that reads and discusses the works of Latin American writers. Es una noche calorosa de verano. De los regalos más grandes de padres a hijos es el gusto de leer. Si no lee tan bien como quisiera, llame a este número. Pronto verá que leerle a sus hijos es tan fácil como abrir un libro. Para más información, llame a Literacy Volunteers of America o llame a su biblioteca pública. Fifty years ago, during the final weeks of World War II, representatives of 50 countries from around the world came together in the Veterans War Memorial Auditorium, now the Herbst Theater, in San Francisco to sign the United Nations Charter, which included the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. A celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is being presented on Wednesday, December 10th at 6 p.m in the Corette Auditorium. This event is co-sponsored by the San Francisco Public Library, Amnesty International, the United Nations Association of San Francisco, and the Action Coalition for Global Change, and will feature testimony by a former prisoner of conscience, dramatic readings, excerpts from a new performance piece, Women in Black, directed by Thais Masur, and the West Coast premiere of the new documentary film Fighting for Our Rights, a tribute to San Francisco's human rights heroes. Here's a special sneak preview of the free speech movement segment of this inspiring new documentary. The campus has become a rallying point for communists and a center for sexual misconduct. Free speech advocates could have been taken to the scruff of the neck and thrown out of the university once and for all. There's a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers. And you've got to make it stop. And you've got to win the case to the people who run it, to the people who own it. That unless you're free, the machine won't be prevented from working at all. We're going, once again, to march up to the second floor of Frau Hall. We're going to have real classes up there. There's going to be freedom schools conducted up there. We're going to have classes on First and Fourteenth Amendment. Floor, third, and second floors are filled. Stay downstairs. May I have your attention, please? I urge you to leave this area. Please go. University expects students to reject an FSM attempt at anarchy. The university has shown tolerance. The university has shown reasonableness. The university has shown decency. Join us for this 50th anniversary celebration of the signing of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights on Wednesday, December 10th, at 6 p.m. in the Corette Auditorium. The Classical Philharmonic of San Francisco and the San Francisco Public Library present a holiday festival of brass with the Brass Company. Join us on Tuesday, December 15th at 6.30 p.m. in the Corette Auditorium for works of Bach, Gabrielli, Handel, and more and enjoy the sounds of the holiday season at the library. The library system will be closed in observance of Christmas, beginning with an early closure on Thursday, December 24th at 5 p.m., and remaining closed for Christmas Day, Friday, December 25th. Similarly, the library will close early on New Year's Eve, Thursday, December 31st, and remain closed for New Year's Day,
Friday, January 1st, 1999. The media production staff here at the library wishes you a happy and healthy holiday season and a new year filled with peace and good books. Our quick tour of some of the exhibitions now taking place in the main library begins with a look at the Hand Bookbinders of California 26th Annual Members Exhibition, now on display in the Sixth Floor Skylight Gallery through December 31st. The exhibition, co-sponsored by the Book Arts and Special Collections Center of the San Francisco Public Library, features the work of amateurs as well as internationally recognized bookbinders. Since the late 70s, the Hand Bookbinders of California has sponsored exhibitions of members' works for many years in the front windows of John Howell Books near Union Square, until this famous shop closed its doors. After a number of years at other venues throughout the Bay Area, the Hand Bookbinders show was welcomed home by the San Francisco Public Library, where exhibitions have taken place since 1993. Next stop, the Steve Silver Music Center on the main library's fourth floor, where the Steve Silver Beach Blanket Babylon exhibition is now on display through March 1999. This lively and colorful exhibit commemorates 25 years of the Beach Blanket Babylon extravaganza, which first opened on June 7, 1974, in the back room of the Savoy Tivoli Restaurant in North Beach. Steve Silver's Beach Blanket Babylon moved on to Club Fagazi, where it has become the longest running musical review in American theater history. Included in the exhibition are costumes, drawings, photographs, and other memorabilia from Steve Silver's personal collection. The exhibition is a tribute to Steve Silver, who died in 1995, and to the San Francisco landmark he created, Beach Blanket Babylon. Moving on now to the third floor of the main library for a look at Sylvester Metamorphosis, From Coquette to Disco Diva, on display in the James C. Hormel Gay and Lesbian Center through December 30th. Curated by the Gay and Lesbian Historical Society of Northern California, the exhibit includes photographs, costumes, album covers, and other memorabilia chronicling the life of the influential disco diva who epitomized San Francisco gay life in the 70s. In honor of the December 1st observance of World AIDS Day, the Bay Area chapter of the Names Project AIDS Memorial Quilt is displaying several panels of the AIDS Memorial Quilt in the main library's grand atrium now through December 10th. Earlier this month on World AIDS Day, the Names Project held a press conference at the main library where six San Francisco high school students spoke on the importance of AIDS and HIV awareness and education before embarking on a journey to Hong Kong as Youth AIDS Ambassadors. With the help of people from this phenomenal organization, the Names Project, many kids are being awakened to the problem and that they can make a difference. The NAMES Project has allowed me to stress the importance of AIDS education and prevention to many communities, but there are many, many more to go. Organizations and people like that from the NAMES Project is what's going to build the foundation to an educated society. If you take one thing away from what I say today, I would like you to learn that you can make a difference. Like this year's theme says, be a force for change. And remember, there will never be an ending until we make every day World AIDS Day. Other invited speakers included Superintendent of Schools Bill Rojas, U.S. Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, and President-elect of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors Tom Amiano. Uh, you know, uh, four years ago, um, a teacher named Tim Kerbo died. He was my lover. And he went around to every classroom in his school uh, before he left to explain to them what AIDS was about, who he was about, and those, those same forces that would have prevented the AIDS quilt being 
displayed in the school district or these students going to Hong Kong would not have allowed him to do that. And fortunately here in San Francisco, we have enough of a safety net, we have enough of a community support system that knows that teaching kids about something is, is, not, is not a bad thing, that uh, trans, um, uh, translating compassion is a good thing. And I think that San Francisco really does stand as one of the model school districts in terms of HIV AIDS education, which is not saying we don't have a long way to go. Speaking of a long way to go, I know these students will be leaving uh, tonight, and uh, I asked uh, uh, Commissioner Chang, who is from New York, gee, how do you say uh, congratulations in Chinese? And he said mazel tov. So mazel tov. <laughs> The youth ambassadors will be taking a panel from the AIDS Memorial Quilt with them on their trip to Hong Kong. The Names Project Memorial Quilt serves to remember people who have died of AIDS and is a poignant reminder of the work that is yet to be done to combat the worldwide spread of the disease. These lovingly detailed panels weave real lives into the ever-growing AIDS statistics. The Bay Area chapter of the Names Project shows these quilts in sections in schools, businesses, libraries, places of worship, and other locations in an ongoing effort to promote AIDS education, awareness, compassion, and to bring an end to this horrible epidemic. A wonderful thing to wish and work for this holiday season. Want to learn how to read? Want to help someone else learn to read? Contact Project Read of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4388. Project Read is an adult literacy program that provides volunteer one-to-one -one tutoring for adult learners. Project Read's support of tutors and students includes tutor orientation and training, continuing education workshops for tutors and students, reading diagnostics for students, family programs, and referrals to classroom instruction at community college centers and to other agencies in the community. There are many ways you can help adults achieve their personal reading goals. Call Project Read to find out how. Learn to read or be a reading tutor. Phone 557-4388. Friends for Life volunteers bring the riches of the San Francisco Public Library to people who can no longer visit the library themselves. Friends for Life volunteers provide a link between the San Francisco Public Library and people with AIDS or HIV disease. If you would like to be a Friends for Life volunteer or you are in need of the services Friends for Life provides, call 557-4352 for more information. Thanks for watching at the Public Library here on City Watch Cable Channel 54. You can catch at the Public Library Monday mornings from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. and from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Friday evenings from 8 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 12 noon to 1 p.m. See you next time.